Hi, everyone. Um, this is the presentation that goes along with the Ghost Ranch project. This is to introduce you to the stratigraphy of the Ghost Ranch region and to help you identify the units in the field that you'll be looking at as you move along the different paths and look at the different views. Now, as you work through the project, remember that each picture um, will have a picture number and it will tell you, for the most part, the bearing um, of the picture. So the bearing is the direction that the picture, you are standing there and facing that direction. So if it says a bearing of 090, that picture is as if you were taking the picture looking due east. So just keep that in mind. We're going to inter introduce you to the stratigraphy here and give you an idea of what these different units look like in the Ghost Ranch area. Um, General Mesozoic stratigraphy from oldest to youngest in the upper Triassic, we have the Chin Lee formation, which is made up of a number of members, including the Shinarump and Salitro Shale members. Neither of these are in your field area. Uh, there's also the Paleo Sandstone and Mesa Montosa members, which are in your field area. And then the Chin Lee formation, the Petrified Forest and Rock Point members. It's important to learn to recognize these units in the photos and to be able to distinguish between say the petrified forest, the rock point, the Mesa Montosa, and the Paleo Sandstone. It's fairly straightforward. Um, as we go through this, we do separate out the units in a somewhat unconventional way in that we call them upper and lower Chin Li when they're really not. But that's just to help you distinguish um, on the map what units you're looking at. So if we, cut, if we look at the erosional profile, so if we look at how these units um, appear physiographically in the field, we can start with, again, the Shinarump, which we don't see, but we, can, we wanna think about these in terms of, are they valley formers, or are they ridge formers? And when we get to the Mesa Montosa and Paleo sandstones, these are cross bedded sandstones, they tend to form slopes. Um, they tend to be slope formers, um, and they hold up slope very well, whereas the petrified forest member overlying the Mace Montosa tends to be a valley former. It's easily eroded, um, it's less competent, and it tends to form valleys. Sitting immediately above the petrified forest member is the rock point member of the Chin Li, and there is a noticeable slope break between the petrified forest member and the rock point member. We'll show you this in photos. It's a very, very sharp slope break, as is the slope break between the Mesa Montosa and the Petrified Forest. So again, Mesa Montosa Paleo tends to be a slope former. There is a noticeable break between those two as we see the Petrified Forest is more easily eroded. And then we need to see another sharp um, break in the erosional profile when we enter the rock point member. It's more difficult to distinguish the boundary between the rock point member, which is still Triassic, and the entrada, which is much, much younger in the Jurassic. So this is a, an erosional unconformity on top of the Chin Li. And the entrada informally, um, we've divided it into a red member, a white member, and the yellow member, which we colloquially call the Tierra Amarillo member. But these sequences are, these are local colors, local names, but they're easy to identify in the field. And in particular, it's tough to distinguish between the rock point and the red member of the entrada. But the rock point tends to be a darker, um, more deeper reddish purple than the red member of the entrada. And the rock point member is ribbed. It kind of, I'll show you this in a picture, but it looks like kind of has a ribbed erosional profile. Whereas the rem red member of the entrada, in fact, the whole entrada in this area is a large alien cross bedded sandstone. So you'll see the red member, a white member of the entrada, and the yellow member. These are all um, slope formers, are very competent units. And the entrada is capped by the Tadilto formation, which contains two members uh, the bottom, the Luciano Mesa limestone, which is a flaggy, thinly bedded limestone and the tongue arroyo gypsum layer, which is, it's, it's very different depending on where you go throughout the Tadilto formation. In some places, the tongue arroyo gypsum is very, very thick. 
in other places is completely absent. It has a very distinctive appearance in the field. It's, it's one of the easiest members to recognize. The Luciano Mesa limestone tends to be very, very thin um, in most places, but it can, be, it can be a little bit thicker. Mostly, um, you'll see that Luciano Mesa is, is relatively thin. And then sitting on top of that is the Somerville um, formation, which again, tends to be more easily eroded um, siltstone, mudstone type environment. And so these tend to form valleys, although they, more, they may form um, less pronounced um, hills when they're sitting on top of elevated regions where you have the Entrada and, and the Luciano Mesa and Tunga Road sitting on top of it. So remember this erosional profile. It's very important as you go through the field and trying to recognize each of these members. So let's look at some of the members that aren't in your field area, but just to give you an idea. Um, this is near Red Rocks. We have the Cutler Formation, the Cutler Group, which is Permian on the bottom. It's overlain by the Shinarump and Salitro. This is Chinle, and then overlain again by the Paleo Sandstone. Um, the Mesa Montosa member of the Petrified Forest. This is Upper Triassic Norian. It's a very fine grain sandstone with lesser mudstone and siltstone that ranges in color from reddish brown to moderate brown to light reddish brown. And it marks the gradation between the sandstone and pebbly sandstone of the underlying Paleo formation and the mudstone dominated overlying petrified forest member. It's actually the painted desert member of the petrified forest. And so these, the sandstone beds dominate near the lower part and mudstone beds tend to dominate the upper part. The sandstone beds are thin to medium tabular and typically ripple laminated to wavy, wavy laminated and plater laminated. And the ripple marks are very noticeable in this, and the troughs commonly give a northwestward to southwestward paleo flow direction. And this sand is a uh, well sorted litharonite. This is a picture of the uh, Mesa Montosa. Here's another shot of these, uh, these ripple marks in the Mesa Montosa member. The contact between the Mesa Montosa and the petrified forest member of the Chin Lee formation is should be very easy to recognize. You go from a slope former to a valley former, and you can see here this, whoops, sorry, here is the uh, Mesa Montosa member and this overlying um, mudstone siltstones, the petrified forest member, the Chinle formation. This, hap this outcrop happens to be near the Canyonas Fault near Abiquiu in New Mexico. Very easy to identify. This is a picture you wanna get in your head when you're trying to figure out where you're at in the stratigraphy. Here's a typical picture of the petrified forest member, uh, the painted desert formation. This happens to be a, a dinosaur quarry near Ghost Ranch in New Mexico, um, where paleontologists were excavating. Uh, and you can see this kind of reddish, greenish, um, uh, very colored mudstone, siltstone that tends to be uh, a valley former. Some other pictures here, I'll show you a few pictures of this. This is another picture of the Painted Desert Formation of the Petrified Forest member, the Chinle. Again, uh, very easily eroded. If you were out hiking in this after the rain, uh, this will stick to your boots and you'll form, you know, you can get up to a foot of this mud, this just thick, sticky mud sticking to your boots. Um, of course, petrified forest member is famous for petrified wood. And in the area of Ghost Ranch in particular, where we're mapping, one of the interesting things is there has been a discovery of carbonized wood. So carbonized wood, this think of these as ancient forest fires. So here are a couple pieces of this carbonized wood that I found within the petrified forest member in the Ghost Ranch mapping area. And you can see if you look at it carefully, it looks very similar to what you would expect to see um, in a forest fire, but what it has that kind of shape and so forth. Um, the Jurassic strata in the area include the Entrada in Tadilto and the overlying Somerville. The Entrada formation is Colovian in age from about 166 to 164. So if you look at these ages, you go back and you look at the Chinle, there is an erosional unconformity between the Chinle and the Entrada. 
Um, it's about a 40 million year gap between the units and the Entrada is considered to be equivalent unit to the Wingate sandstone. Um, it's been divided into three formal members, a lower sandy, a middle silty, and an upper sandy, um, sometimes called the slick rock formation or slick rim. And in our area, it's only the uppermost member that is present in our field area. And again, we have informally divided this into three units from top to bottom, the red member, the white member, and the tier Amarilla member. Um, students sometimes call this the nickname, the unit, the Neapolitan ice cream, because it looks like strawberry, um, uh, vanilla, and I guess chocolate would be tier Amarilla, I don't know. Um, anyways, it's, it's only in this area, and these are informal units, and we don't divide these out. When we're mapping, we include them, we all lump them as Entrada, but it's important to note that there is this transition from red to white to yellow member. It helps you identify these units. Overlying the Entrada formation is a Tadilto formation. It consists of this lower limestone dominated interval called the Luciano Mesa member. And it is overlain locally by a gypsum interval called the Tungarolia member. Um, the Luciano Mesa is very thin two to eight meters thick and consists of mostly thinly laminated, dark gray, yellowish gray, um, carriage and rich limestone. Beds near the base are usually sandy. There is some micro folding of the thin limestone laminate is common, especially um, you see this over in the area of the Kenyonis Fault quite readily. The overlying Tungaroya members up to 30 meters thick of white to light gray gypsum interbedded with the carbonate. If you bend to New Mexico white mesa, is waiting, the, the actual gypsum is being mined at White Mesa. And in localized areas east of west of Chimney Rock, which is very close to our mapping area, a thin limestone bed less than one meter is deposited on the gypsum of the Tungaroya member. Um, two lithologic relationships are associated with the Tungaroya member in the Ghost Ranch area, gypsum interbedded with carbonate and a limestone microbreccia left by dissolution of the gypsum of the Tungaroya member. And again, when you're mapping this, we map everything as Tadilto. It doesn't matter um, whether it's the gypsum or the Luciano Mesa, we just map it all as Tadilto. And then overlying that in our field area, the last unit that's present in our field area is the Somerville um, Morrison. The Somerville is a thinly and cyclically bedded, composed of maroon, grayish red, yellowish gray sealstone, sandy sealstone. Um, fine gypsoliferous sandstone um, if, uh, nearby in the Chama Basin, the Somerville is, is easily divided into two informal members, lower and upper. The lower member is about 12 to 15 meters thick and is gypsoliferous sandstone and siltstones that forms ribbed cliffs or slopes. Now, we informally call the more reddish unit the upper Somerville and the white unit as the lower Somerville as an aid to mapping in our field area. These are informal names. They do not apply across the area. Um, they're just to help you identify some of the structural issues that you will see in the field area. So just remember that, keep that in mind. Um, this is a, a diagram of sort of what the, the uh, paleo geography, the, the paleo environments were at the time of the Tadelto and Entrada. To the south, we had some highlands. So these are a Precambrian core that stayed elevated during much of this time. And then, um, sorry, and then we had the Entrada Erg, this um, you know, probably dune system, Aeolian dune system um, to the north. And then eventually this was covered by this Tadilto Salina Basin. So a very widespread um, unit is a Tadilto throughout northern New Mexico. You can find it everywhere. It's a very distinctive looking unit in New Mexico. The contact, so if we turn to the contact between the Chin Li and the Entrada, this is a place called Mushroom Canyon. Um, it's not too far from Ghost Ranch. And you can see here, this is a, this is actually a paleosol sitting on top of the Rock Point member. You can see some of these little sand dikes of the overlying Entrada. So this is a contact, very nice contact here between the Chinle and the Entrada formation in the Ghost Ranch region. 
The Tadelto, this is the Luciano Mesa member of the Tadelto. Um, you can see it's a thinly, thinly bedded limestone air, uh, here. And <laughs> it's, it's only maybe, maybe at most two or three meters thick in our field area. But this is what it looks like. And again, it is a, a slope former on top of the Entrada. It tends to form a, a very um, small overhang on top of the Entrada, so it's slightly more resistant than the underlying Entrada formation. Um, if we look at the entire sequence, it's you know, somewhat complicated, but just to give you an idea of what this erosional profile looks like, um, down here we're looking at the petrified forest. This, in this valley, we're looking at the petrified forest member, the Chin Li. You can see the slope break. <clears throat> it's kind of hard to see here, um, but this is the rock point member here. When this slope breaks, <coughs> and you tend to get this, a more steeper slope, you're going from the petrified forest into the rock point. And you can see the color variation. So the, the rock point is a much deeper red, whereas the red member of the Entrada tends to be a lighter red. It is usually overlain by the white member of the Entrada and then the Tierra Amarilla member of the Entrada. And here um, we see the gypsum layer of the Tadilto and then overlying that again, you can see the slope break here. So there's a very steep slopes here, the red, the white, the Tierra Maria, Tadilto, and then we get a slope break into the, <laughs> the Morrison and Somerville. Um, here they're undifferentiated and then overlaid by the Cretaceous to go to sandstone. We can look at this uh, a little bit more closely. Um, a quick quiz here, just looking at these units. See if you can identify them. We'll take just a minute and then I'll go through them. So we have unit one, two, and three here. Again, think about the colors, think about the slopes and the units. So while you're looking at this picture, I'll take you over to this picture. And what we're looking at here is entirely Entrada. Here's a yellow member of the Entrada, the white member of the Entrada, the red member of the Entrada, overlain by the Tadilto. Uh, here it looks to be mostly gypsum. These gypsum layers tend to form. They tend to thicken and thin across the outcrop. And there is a little bit of a Luciano Mesa here as well. Okay, so turning here, again, we look at the deep purple red color. There is a slope break here, so out this direction is the petrified forest member. This is the rock point member. This is the erosional unconformity between the rock point and the red member of the Entrada. Sorry. Um, so the red member of the Entrada continues up. We get into the white member of the Entrada, the yellow member of the Entrada, and up here at number three is the Tadilta formation. So rock point, Entrada, Tadilta. Another quiz, again, here we're looking at two units. Um, we're looking at the yellow Entrada, the Tierra Amarilla here, and a very, very thick Tadilto gypsum unit in this picture. Here's another picture, same thing, different location. Yellow Entrada here, very thick gypsum layer of the Tadilto here. And this is from an area near the Cañones Fault, where we can see a little bit of the white member of the Entrada, yellow member of the Entrada, overlain by the Tadilto. You can see the same thing here is a little bit of the Tadilto here. This is near the Cañones Fault. This is a typical picture of the, the massive cross bedding in the yellow Entrada. This is just a float block that happened to um, give us a nice picture of this cross bedded sandstone in the yellow Entrada. Another picture here looking at all of these sequences. Um, here we're in the valley, we're in the petrified forest member. It's tough to see the rock point, but this is petrified forest rock point. The Entrada here and overlaid by the Tadilto formation up here. This is chimney rock near the, the actual ghost ranch property in New Mexico. And this is a close up 
of the contact between the Entrada and the Tadilto at Chimney Rock. I believe um, that Chimney Rock actually collapsed a couple of years ago. And looking out here in the valley, you're looking at all petrified forest member of the Chinle Formation. Okay, so, so that's it. You should watch this. Uh, you should understand the erosional relationships between these units and what they look like. It will help you um, as you go through the field and map this project. Thanks.